Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I am hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So, remember how I was sick and I told you I was sick? Well, now I'm fine. I'm just left with a little bit of a raspy voice. So, I uh, am sorry if this annoys you a little bit, but I gotta do with what I gotta, what I have. And I am all healthy. I'm fine now just with this raspy voice. Before we get into the discussion about the potential for a major pattern change that will be occurring, as you can see by these colors, I would like to uh, just let you guys know that I have a Patreon account, and uh, if you'd like to support it, you could just, I'll put a link to it in, in the description box below, and uh, it could be as little as $2 or as much as $25, and to any, if you even become a follower, I would really appreciate it. So uh, thank you if you decide to do so. If you don't want to do it, no problem. Absolutely no problem. This is just an optional thing. And I would actually like to thank my uh, my patrons, Constant, Mutart, Amy Harvey, James Darling, and John L. Hacker. Thank you guys so much um, for supporting me. It is, it's been, it's been the world. It's mean, it means the world to me. So thank you for that. So right now, let's uh, go back to the GFS model and let's, I'll show you the data, what it's showing and what's happening. So right now we're at hour zero and we are not really seeing any cold weather, maybe a little bit across the Northeast, but mainly around average for much of the country. And we will be, uh, still seeing quite a bit of warm temperatures throughout this week. Nothing major until around late week. Thursday, the Northeast could get um, skimmed by this little uh, Arctic, I would say, blast. Not really Arctic outbreak, just a chill, if you want to call it that. It will affect the upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, those states. But otherwise, the rest of the country seems to be above average for now. But then we see next weekend, you could see very chilly conditions. I would not be surprised if some schools are off on Friday, perhaps up in the north, uh, maybe on even Monday. I think that our, I'll show you in just a minute. We could have quite a bit of Arctic potential. So um, let's just go. To, let's just go through the two meter temperature anomaly for now, and I'll show you the actual temperatures in just a minute but keep in mind this is a gfs this is just one model and this model many times is not 100 percent right and not, not a single model is 100 percent right uh, it's just a a modeling of what the forecast may be and the actual temperatures will change for sure from here on they could go even lower or most likely just a little bit warmer than what's forecasted we will just have to wait and see so don't get too um you know excited or scared depends on your lover of cold or if you hate the cold so right now this is sunday we could you know still very chilly conditions and then this is what i'm talking about look at this monday morning a lot of the east coast will be very cold possibly school off for many kids including me i may be will be having you know school i'm hoping guys this is this would be a blessing and many people that uh go to school know that any we'll take any day we can get to get off but for those that are not that don't go to school this is just going to be a major inconvenience or potentially life-threatening this is going to be pretty cold guys this is not something to be this will be the coldest air of the season that's just the best way to put it and we could see another one wednesday thursday and potentially even another one staying so going into february late january we're looking at a very 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 chilly pattern so let's just rewind back to our 108 and let's look at the actual temperatures so i showed you the two meter temperatures anomaly and now let's go to two meter temperature shaded if you want this website and want this information for yourself this is called tropicaltidbits.com just type in tropical tidbits and you'll be at the website you'll just need to click on it and it's a great website oh my god this is a lifesaver guys this website is amazing if you want to use it again i'll post a link to it in the description below so uh again it's winter even without arctic outbreaks it will still be below 32 degrees across some of the country uh, most of the country actually i would say but with those arctic outbreaks see saturday that time frame next weekend look at that potentially single digits for a lot of the countries especially the further north you go since that's where the cold air is coming from and then we get a reinforcing shot tuesday um and into wednesday january 23rd 22nd 2019 
And then you can see it doesn't really stay warm. Maybe a couple degrees above average between the shots of cold air. And then we see another. I mean, look at those temperatures. Negative 30, negative 40, negative 33. This is Fahrenheit, guys. Negative 33 would be absolutely outlandish. Now, whether this is going to happen with such severity is still a questionable thing. But whether colder temperatures are on their way, I'm fairly confident that colder temperatures are on, on their way. It's just a matter of fact whether um, it will be this cold. So let's go to the FV3 GFS. This is, I really like this model as well. I, I prefer it over the GFS in many aspects. So I won't show you the two meter temperature anomaly because it's basically the same thing. Cold, cold, cold. And I, this is actually doesn't happen too often where the um, so many models are agreeing at once on this. The European models also agreeing on some colder air. So this is Sunday, the Saturday time frame. Look at that. Even colder than a GFS, the night in the negative uh, double digits, so negative 17, negative 14, you could see here, Northern Iowa, negative six, negative six, Central Illinois, Southern Wisconsin. This moves on to the Northeast. We get a second blast of cooler air, and look how far that cold air gets, that below freezing, all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Five, two, four during the day. This is gonna be ridiculously cold, but if you like the cold weather like I do, this is gonna be awesome. I, I honestly love the cold weather. Look at that. Just that's you rarely see that actually, because um, sometimes when we get cold outbreaks during the winter, they aren't always in the coldest time of the year. But we're getting below average around 20 to 30 in some places at the coldest time of the year. This could be a significant life threatening um, issue or a. <laughs> If you go to school, a life and save, you know, God and Savior. I mean, this could, you know, help us out a lot if you go to school, but I probably shouldn't focus that too much on that. But I mean, I know there's a lot of people that watch my videos that still are kids. And I know that there's quite a bit as well that watch my videos that aren't kids. So I'll just try, you know, staying between those two. So very cold. That's that's the bottom line. Very cold and it continues to stay cold. So Let's look at some of the ensemble models. Let's go to the GEFS ensembles and let's see what they have to say. Let's just go to the two meter temperature anomalies. That will probably be better because these cold digits just um, are at this point so common that they don't really do much to your eyeball. But right now this week, we're still all good. Not cold, not, you know, not freezing. We're still plenty good. Uh, I would say that if you have any activities, like taking down the Christmas decorations, anything that you sh you can do now, uh, do it now or this week because next week is going to be very cold, very chilly temperatures. You can see Saturday, starting Saturday into Friday, just chilly. This is the ensemble, so they will be a little bit um, more moderate with what they do because there's so many models put together that um, – some of them are being a little bit warmer, some of them colder, so it's kind of an average. But still, you could see below average and does not even budge, continues to stay below average. So this is, I would say at this point, I'm very confident that cold air is coming in. How cold? There's still a lot to be determined. We still have one week, and the news is still not talking about it. But um, here and on YouTube, you'll, you'll definitely be hearing on it from me and from others in the next couple of days. Uh, before this actually happens so let's go to the eight to six to ten day outlook january 18th through the 22nd so this is uh around that time frame of next weekend into i think wednesday or tuesday around that time frame um below average they have just uh updated this couple hours ago and they have put this blue on um, above average for the west but definitely cooler for the north but look at this above average precip so you know what that means big snows major cold. This is going to be a very active time period. I would say that this is going to be a uh, a, a potential major blizzard uh, time frame for the Northeast. I think the Northeast will definitely catch up on their snowfall during this time. There are some hints that are showing major snows coming for the Northeast. Let's go to the 8 to 14 day outlook. This is just the you know, uh, bottom of the cold. And look, this is 8 to 14 day outlooks, and they have almost 60% confidence in this. This doesn't happen too often when it's so far out, but they have such high confidence. This is, uh, 
this is showing definitely something. They're not too confident in it, uh, yet, but over the next couple of days, it will be darkest blue. It will be one of the darkest blues we have ever seen. And then precipitation probability still above average. So very cold, above average precip, lots of snow. I mean, lots of snow headed for the U.S., for the United States, at least the eastern part of the United States. So uh, if you'll actually, let's check out how long this is recording. I would, I would like to quickly show you, uh, the, let's just go to the FE3 GFS and check out the the snowfall probabilities and see if it's going to be an act more active pattern. So uh, let's go to MSLP or precip and frozen. Let's go to hour six. You can see a potential storm that is way far out, but still showing the, uh, the probabilities of these snowstorms occurring. We have that storm winter storm Gia winding down across the mid Atlantic, not producing much at this point. Uh, still a couple of inches in some areas though is possible. Definitely a record-breaking storm, guys. This storm has been one for the record book. St. Louis, I think, got around, got around 11, 12 inches. My area got around 3 to 4. And um, look at this. Uh, calm for this week. Wednesday, Thursday, maybe a couple of uh, clippers clipping uh, the northern U.S. Also, um, what's, what's going to be major here is California and the West Coast is going to get hammered by big storms. I will be making a separate video on that today or tomorrow in the morning, so stay tuned for that. But look at this. A potential snowstorm next Saturday across the across the north, the Midwest, I would say, the heart of the Midwest. Maybe not that much snow for the Northeast, but just wait, guys. Uh, you can see right there, potential snowstorm, another potential snowstorm, more snow for the Midwest, another snowstorm, another snowstorm. So uh, very, very active period. And this is going to wrap up for today's video. I have quite a bit of uh, stuff to do. I have homework. I have been gone for the past two days in school. Thursday and Friday, so I need to catch up. But again, if you'd like to become a Patreon, consider doing so. And uh, I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you all guys um, on the flip side. See ya. Bye.